Uh, it's good to be here. Okay, tingnan mo yung katabi mo. Okay ka naman sa katabi mo. Masaya ka naman sa katabi mo. <laughs> okay, sabihin mo naman sa kanya, matatapos na ang July. Excited na ba kayo mag-August? Okay, I hope na um, wala naman po tayong magagawa. Mag-August naman po talaga kahit na whether we like it or not. And that's why, uh, first of all, let me introduce myself. I'm James, I'm one of your campus missionaries. And because I'm a campus missionary, I want to give a very quick invitation to all of our students who are here, college students, our high school students. Next week, we're going to be launching our youth service. Okay, so... Yung campus convergence po natin, agagawin po natin siyang youth service, okay? And that's gonna be 4 p.m. every Saturday. And again, yung heart po natin kung bakit tayo may youth service is so that the students will continue to be discipled, okay? Now, siguro habang nagpipreach po ako, baka nagtatapo ba kayo by hawak ba akong cellphone, okay? Hindi po ito cellphone, okay? Clicker po ito, okay? <laughs> Kasi baka, may, may hinihintay bang text si Pastor? Hindi naman po, wala naman po. Okay, but, um, you know, this week has been very fast for us. How many of you nafe-feel mo na parang ang bilis ng mga araw? Nafe-feel nyo ba yun? Parang ako lang mo, parang me and my victory group, pag nagkikita kami every Sunday, parang talaga magkikita ulit tayo ngayon. Parang ganun. Hindi <laughs> naman sa nagsasawa kami sa isa't isa. Pero parang ang bilis ng, ng mga araw na, na lumilipas. No? And, and this week, um, we went to a wedding. Okay, this is a wedding of one of our uh, worship leaders. Okay, kung kilala niyo po si Chris, uh, nag, uh, ano po siya, he's part of Victory Worship and she is part of Victory Pasig and Estancia. So we went to their wedding. And um, it is really refreshing to be, uh, to, to witness a wedding. There's something about weddings that when we are there, me and my wife, para kaming, parang nare-renew kami. Parang yung pagmamahal namin sa isa't isa lalong pumupusyaw. Tama ba yung Tagalog ko? Parang ganon yung feeling. Okay, parang basta lalong nag, nagbubloom. And, and while we were there, I was just looking. It's a very intimate wedding. And I was thinking to myself, this is what weddings is all about. You know, this is the, the essence of wedding. It's about the couple. Yung pwedeng merong mga ano, pwede pong uh, walang catering, pwedeng onti lang yung tao, pero as long as nandun yung couple and the family is there, tuloy po yung kasal at masaya po ang kasal. Tama po ba? Right? Like, the venue is there, it's all in addition, the catering, it's good, the friends, the, the SDE, all of that is an amazing uh, ingredients of an amazing wedding. But again, it is not the highlight of everything. I, I remember yung mga ninong at ninang namin, pag tinatanong namin, ano po ba yung highlight nyo? Lagi nilang sinasabi na mag-invest kayo sa marriage nyo. Wag lang sa wedding. Kasi wa- wedding, one day event, yung, yung marriage nyo, panghabang buhay. And, and while I was there, I was just thinking about church. I was thinking about us as a people na, you know, it's great that every Sunday we get together. It's great that we sing together. We have a great worship team. It's great that we have volunteers. It's, it's, it's great that we have everything here. But then, you know, as much as all of this is great, if all that we do is we gather every Sunday, but we don't get to share lives with one another, we're missing out something. Para po siyang cake, na parang okay naman, it can be great, pero kung walang icing, parang kulang, it could have been better. You can have Jesus, but if you don't have community, it's good, but it can be better. How many of you agree? Pwedeng part ka ng community, you're meeting here every now and then, but then you don't have Jesus. It's great you have friends, but it can be better. It's great that we're gathered here. You're here every Sunday, 300, you know, 365 days of the year. 52 Sundays a year, you're here. Kahit New Year, Pasko, nandito ka pa rin, nagpapakita ka pa rin. But if at the end of this, your faith is not growing, it's good, we're happy for you, but it could be better. I think about that when it comes to our faith. You know, it is not just one thing. Right now, kasi may mga ganun na po nangyayari, naniniwala ako kay Jesus. But I don't really believe in the church. I believe in Jesus, but I don't want to be part of the church because the church has had, had done many things. They have heard many things. They've experienced many things. And so, so many people, parang nagbabak out na. Attend na lang ako ng church, pero parang to share life, it just feels so much. 
it's great, but I always feel sad because it can be better. Your walk with Jesus can be a lot better, and that's what we want to talk about today. Pwede po ba talaga tayong mag, ma, mamuhay yung pagiging kristyano natin na may mga missing ingredients? You know, what I believe is the faith that we have, it's not just about one thing. Jesus is the main thing, of course. Pinag-usapan natin yung first week that Jesus is the founder. Jesus is the builder of our church. Jesus is the defender of our church, which, is, which makes our church victorious. Diba? Yung, uh, the gates of hell will not prevail against it. But at the same time, as much as Jesus is the main thing, Jesus has designed the church to grow in community. Jesus has designed the church to grow in, in, in ways na hindi lang basta umatend lang tayo, tas yun na. And that is what we want to talk about today. I want to invite everybody to stand up to your feet because we're going to be reading the Word of God. What does God have to say? especially in a post-pandemic time. It says here, To all those in Rome who are loved by God and called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for all of you because your faith is proclaimed in all the world. For God is my witness, whom I serve in my spirit in the gospel of His Son, that without ceasing I mention you always in my prayers. Asking that somehow, by God's will, I may now at last succeed in coming to you. For I long to see you, that I may impart to you some spiritual gift to strengthen you. That is, that we may be mutually encouraged by each other's faith, both yours and mine. I do not want you to be unaware, brothers, that I have often intended to come to you, but thus far have been prevented, in order that I may reap some harvest among you as well as among the rest of the Gentiles. And last but not least, I am under obligation to both Greeks and to barbarians, both to the wise and to the foolish, so I am eager to preach the gospel to you also who are in Rome. Lord, help us to understand your word and help us to apply your word as well. Holy Spirit, make your word very clear to every one of us, whether we're new or we've been attending for some time or we, are, we have been growing in our relationship with you. Lord, we pray for a fresh revelation for each one of us. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You can go and take your seat. Now, a very quick context po ng mga pinag-uusapan natin today. Last week, Pastor Richard talked about the church actually growing. Now they're growing together, they're sharing lives, they're breaking bread. Naalala niyo po ba yun? Kung nandito kay last week. So they were having communion and they were sharing bread and they, were, they said that they were meeting regularly and people were being added. Now, after, uh, after that chapter, there were people who were now receiving Jesus. 3,000 yung nasave. In Acts 2. Now, those 3,000 people, it was a mix of people. May mga Jews, may mga Romans, at may mga kung ano-ano pang iba, mga Cretans, at kung ano-ano pang mga nationalities that was present at that time. Now, eventually, after nung festival, now bumalik na po sila sa mga nation nila. And one of the nations that, that, way, that they went back to is the, the place in, in Rome. Now, from there, the Christians now has started a church so mix po yung church sa ano sa tawag nito, sa Rome ng Gentiles and Jews. Now the church was growing and it was amazing. Parang the, the empire was actually seeing that there is this church and it's actually uh, a church that is vibrant, full of life and it's making an impact. Now ganun po yung nangyayari sa church. Yung church po is not just something that we gather around but it also really affects and influences the community. Yun po yung prayer natin at yung church natin maging. Maging blessing po tayo dito sa Pasig. Tama po ba? How many of you, you want that? Na yung church natin hindi lang yung nilalamig ka every Sunday. Di ba? <laughs> Pero gusto po natin nagbibigay tayo ng warmth at, at, at the same time. In our city, in our nation. Yun po dapat, yung, yun po yung design ni Jesus. And so now the church was growing. It was now, Christianity was all over the place. It's now advancing as Jesus has said. And now as much as there is growth, there is also complexity. Because before, onti lang, mas madali. 
Pero with growth, we all know that growth brings complexity. Tama po ba? Pag onti lang, ang saya. How many of you yung mga taga-pioneer pa dito? Naalala nyo yun. Nung onti pa lang, di ba yung parang ang saya kasi magkakakilala tayo. Kilala natin lahat. Pero nung medyo dumadami na, masaya pa din. Pero hindi na tayo magkakakilala masyado. Di ba? Dati kaya mong tawagin yung usher by name. Ah, si Roger yan. Roger, kamusta? Pero ngayon, bro na lang. Di ba? Hindi mo na kilala. Okay. Oy, bro. Yeah, yes, kaya gano'n na lang. And, and so, it's bringing complexity ngayon. Now, Paul wanted to address that and it was becoming an issue because yung mga Gentiles, because there was a time na pinaalis yung mga Jews sa Rome. So, pumasok yung mga Gentiles. Sila yung nag-take over ng church because sila yung pinastay doon. Now, pagbalik, nung nag, nagpalit na nung ruler, pinabalik na nila yung Jews. Ngayon, may tension. Kasi, the Jews were thinking, wait, kami yung chosen race. Alam naman namin na sinasave ni God, pati yung mga Gentiles, pero hindi ba dapat kami yung naglilid? Ngayon, may tension na nangyayari. And then, Paul wanted to address that because Paul believed it's not supposed to be a point of tension, but it is something that God has actually ordained for a purpose. He wanted to address that issue. Now, here is the intro of Paul. Yung binasa po natin ganina. Sabi niya dito, to all those in Rome who are loved by God and called to be saints. For Paul to open his letter like that, it means totoo po ito, hindi po nang bobola si Paul. And, and I like this. And I believe that this is the church. Every one of us here. If you are a believer of Jesus, you are loved by God and you are called to be a saint. Tignan mo yung katabi mo. Mukhang santo yung katabi mo. Okay? Sino medyo agree ka naman? Mukhang santo yan. Okay? Parang ayaw. <laughs> Parang yung iba. <laughs> Hindi po to santo. Santa. Ito, iba, iba yan. Iba yan. Okay? But, that is the description of Paul to the church. Sabi na, you are loved by God. And at the same time, you're called to be saints. The church was in a place na grabe, ang galing. Mahal na mahal kayo ni God. Binibless kayo ni God. And he goes on to continue. Sabi niya dun sa medyo baba, first, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for all of you because your faith is proclaimed in all the world. So they were not just loved, they were not just called to be saints, but they were also actually exemplifying a faith that was worth honoring. Yung faith na meron yung church na to was actually really something to commend. And so, this is a good church. How many of you, would you, uh, how many of you would agree with me? It's a love church. It's a church called to be a saint. And it's a, a, a church that has a growing faith. I mean, if you gusto mo ganun yung faith. Yung pag ganun yung faith ng church na attract ka parang wow. Gusto ko maten sa ganun church kasi parang pag nag sila talagang nangyayari. Yung parang talagang lahat ng tao nag, may, may, may hindi lang sila nagmamahalan pero they are all in love with God. But here's the thing about this. When I was reading this, sabi ni Paul in the next slide, sabi niya, that I, I, God is my witness whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of His Son that without ceasing, I mention you always in my prayers asking that somehow by God's will, may now at last succeed in coming to you. Paul did not look at this church and say, you know what, your faith is great. Yung, yung, yung uh, love ni God is real in you and you're called to be saints. And you know what, that's great. I'm happy for you as a church. I'll see you next time. Hindi niya sinabi na, alam mo, okay na kayo eh. So, doon na lang o doon sa may mga problematic na church na lang. Hindi na siya nabi na talaga, this is good news. Ang ganda yung reputation niyo. Okay, God bless you. Good luck. Hindi niya ginanon. Okay, hindi niya pinabayaan lang. But rather, there was something different about Paul because Paul had a longing. Paul said, I want to still meet you. You know why? Paul wanted to meet this church because he knows the church is not just a transaction. It's not just about high hellos. Paul understand that church, although hindi siya yung nagplant ng church, but because it is his brother and sisters from another nation, he knows, I'm concerned with you as well. May pake ko sa'yo. Kasi pareho tayo ng faith eh. Now, may, 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 may pake ka ba sa katabi mo? Uh, or wala naman? 
Kahit anong mangyari lang, okay lang. <laughs> Pag di mo nakita next week, okay lang. But for Paul, it was different. For Paul, he was saying, you know what? It's good that your reputation is great, that your faith is great, but you know what? I want it to be better. It can be so much better. That's why I want to go there. Now, bakit po gusto pumunta ni Paul? Let me share three reasons why Paul wanted to meet with this church in Rome and why we as a church as well, we are encouraged to also meet together, to not give up meeting together. First, is because when we meet together, we share spiritual gifts to the church. Paul wanted to go there because he wanted to share something that God has deposited in him. Sabi niyo doon, I long to see you that I may impart to you some spiritual gifts. Can you say impart? Can you say impart? Paul wanted to impart something. Hindi po naghahanap ng bakasyunan si Paul. Hindi niya sinabi na, balita ko, ang galing ng mga gladiator dyan. Ah. Parang, dalin, da, yayain niyo naman ako dyan. Hindi, hindi, po siya na, hindi, hindi niya po gustong pumunta ng Rome kasi may idle time lang siya. But Paul knew that as much as you as a church is great there, I want to go there because there's a spiritual gift that God has given me and I need, it, I need to share it with you. You know, I believe as a church, there is a place to receive, but there's also a place to share. Do you believe in that? That we're here not just to get, we're here also to share something. If you are a believer in Jesus, I want you to know this, that you have a spiritual gift. That hindi ka lang nandito, tapos parang si, si pastor lang yung bida. Hindi, alam mo, as much as God works in our lives, God is also working in your life. A lot of times we go to church and we think, you see, di ba kaya pag may nagpapapray for healing, kay pastor tayo magpapray. Kasi si pastor, malakas yung Holy Spirit. Di ba ako, wala pa eh, level one pa lang. Yung mga levels eh. Parang ganun yung feeling eh. But you know, all of us here, we actually have received a gift from the Holy Spirit if we are in Christ. Po, uh, Peter actually talks about this. Sabi niya, ay, mali, mali yung naklik ko. Okay, nagugulang pa, pa, pa po sa clicker. In 1 Peter 4 verse 10, Just as each one of you has received a gift, a spiritual talent, an ability graciously given by God. How many of you are glad for this? Pwedeng hindi ka singer, pero iba yung spiritual gift mo. Okay. Pwedeng siguro hindi ka usher na palangite, pero hindi ibig sabihin nun is wala kang regalo kay God. Sabi dito, um, employ it in serving one another and is appropriate for good stewards of God's multifaceted grace, faithfully using the diverse, varied gifts and abilities granted to Christians by God's unmerited favor. Wow. So God has given us a gift. Now, ano ba yung mga gift na to, James? Ano ba mga to? Paul talks about it in his letter to the Romans, uh, to the to the Romans, <laughs> to the Romans. Sabi niya dito, having gifts that diver, differ according to the grace given to us, let us use them if prophecy in proportion to our faith. Now, there is such a gift as prophetic. Okay? Meron ng meron na po ba sa inyong naka-experience ng prophetic? May ano yung someone gave you a prophecy? You, you were in church and nasabi niya, can I just pray for you? You know what? I, I just see. Hindi, yung pro- prophecy po, hindi ito po ang panguhula. Okay? <laughs> hindi po, ta- ta- parang nanalo ka sa loto. Babalatuan mo ako. Tama ba? Parang, hindi, hindi po ganun to. Prophecy po is somehow, it's a partial picture of what God is about to do. Sometimes it can be a warning. Sometimes it can be edifying. Nakaka-build up po siya. Now, there are some people who are like that. Hindi mo lang alam, pero meron kang nasisense na ganun pag mga, mga tao. Parang pag nagpipray ka, tapos pag sinabi mo, in Jesus' name, Amen. Kamusta? Alam mo, sakto yun. Paano mo nalaman? Kasi merong prophetic. Now, meron ding mga tao na ang gift is serving. Yung talagang ang saya nila mag-serve. Hindi lang po yung mga eggsy. May mga tao po sa atin na it energizes us to serve. May mga ganun po ba kayo? 
Yung asawa ko po, talagang may energize siya mag-serve. Yun po yung stress reliever niya. Yung, siguro yung katabi mo kanina, pag upo niya, yung, yung upuan gusto niyang inaayos. Yung, dapat nandito yan, yung angle niya. Ginagano niya. Yung, dapat ma- malamig yung aircon. Yung, yung may ganong ka. You want to always serve. Another type of gift is someone who teaches. How many of you here? Tignan mo yung asawa mo. Magaling magturo. May, may ganun ba? Yung, ito po. Hindi, hindi, hindi po ganun teaches. Okay? Hindi po ganun pagtuturo. Pet, but someone who is just exemplary in, in teaching. Some of these people actually are in kids' church. May mga kids' church volunteers ba tayo dito? Napakagaling po magturo ng mga to. Ito po yung mga taong sobrang saludo ko. Kasi pag nagtuturo, kahit nalang turuan yung mga bata. Kami po nung anak ko, hindi po, hindi po kami nag, minsan nag-aaway kami dalawa. Kailangan ko ng kids' church sa bahay. <laughs> Pero kaya may mga taong gifted po talaga yung hindi, yung hindi sa kanila struggle magturo. When they start teaching, you just see that, wow, God has given this person grace. There are people who are also great in exhortation. There are people who contributes, who are very generous. How many of you, you have this gift? Generosity. Walang nagtaas, grabe. <laughs> How many of you have the gift of receiving? Generosity. <laughs> okay. Ibang gift po yan, okay? There are people who lead. There are people who act in mercy. There are different gifts for every one of you. Let me tell you this. Nung nagbigay po ng gift si God, lahat po tayo nakatanggap. Hindi po to sila-sila lang. Yung mga staff lang, e eh, staff kayo, kaya kayo yung may gift. Lahat po tayo. Now, in another letter, he says that there are more types of gifts. And he elaborate niya pa. And I, and I don't want to belabor the point. I just want to keep showing you there's utterance of wisdom, utterance of knowledge. There are many gifts that the Holy Spirit has given to each one of us. In Ephesians, Paul even says that there is the gift of shepherding, of an evangelist. Merong mga tao dito na kapag nilabas ka lang talaga yung you're ready to always preach the gospel. That is just burning in you. You are a teacher, a shepherd, a prophet. All of these things, it's a gift. Now, what does that tell each one of us? It tells us that none of us here are empty-handed we all have something to share. You have something to share. Now, here's my question. If all of us here, God has given a gift, now are you sharing that gift? Or are you keeping that gift? Are you just saying, alam mo, may, o nga, parang may ganun ako, pero ako na lang, okay lang. Or could it be that God has given you this gift and it's about time that you share this gift to other people. Can you just imagine a church na parang every week exchange gift tayo? Kasi dala mo yung gift mo, nagpo-prophecy, yung isa nakakaintindi ng speaking in tongues, yung isa ganito, word of wisdom. And lahat tayo, pag nagsama-sama tayo, parang, uy, alam mo, may regalo ako sa'yo. It's ikaw din. And then, can you just imagine the life that will be in church. I believe that's the picture of the church that God wants to have. Now, ano pa po ba yung reason kung bakit, kung bakit gustong pumunta ni Paul sa Rome? Second reason is to strengthen and establish the church. Paul didn't just want to go there to just share a spiritual gift, but he wanted to share the spiritual gifts because he knows that as it says in this verse, the spiritual gifts will strengthen a person. Other translations would say, would fix you. Other translations would, it would also say, to establish you. Yun po yung ibig sabihin ito. Now, it's really true, Philippians 4 verse 13, that I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. How many of you, iniwala ka doon? Di ba? Sino nagsulat nun? Steph Curry. <laughs> yun na lang yung alam natin ngayon, di ba? So, pero, di ba, 
Totoo naman po yun. Nothing is impossible with Christ. Yes, that Christ is enough. Yes, totoong totoo po yun. Walang mintes po yun. Sobrang totoo po yun kahit ano mangyari. But at the same time, how many of you know that there are times that you wonder? There are times that you are weakened. How many of you here, 365 days of the year, you're just, I'm strong. May ganun po ba sa inyo? Or there are times when something hits you and you realize, I'm not that strong. If there's something that showed us that, it's the pandemic. We thought we were strong. But when pandemic hit, we all felt, parang hina. Ano nangyayari sa akin? Ano nangyayari sa faith ko? And that's why Paul was wanting to go there because he knows if this church is not fixed, they're going to drift away eventually. Ang dami pong Kristiyano, they start great, but then eventually, a few months, a few weeks, they drift away and they start to say, bakit kaya na wala ako? Because maybe you were not strengthened in the first place. That's why Paul wanted to strengthen them. Sabi dun ni Paul, this is the reason why there are gifts that are given to edify, to build up the church. A few days ago, we were hit by an earthquake. And it's what, it was a devastating earthquake. When we see the pictures, grabe. I hope that if you have anybody there, if you know anybody there, I hope they're safe. But that's the reality. Earthquakes don't announce themselves. Ahead of time. Meron po bang naga, may nagte-text ba sa inyo? Papunta na ako. In five minutes. Wala po. Lahat tayo nag, na, 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 nagugulat na lang po tayo. And how many of you, you know, when something tra- tragic in life happens, we don't get to have a heads up. Pagkatawag na lang sa'yo, may sakit ka nga pala. Namatay nga pala yung tatay mo. Uy, wala. Eh, sorry ah, nagbabawas tayo ng empleyado. Sorry, ikaw yung... Uy, tanggal ka na nga pala sa scholarship. It just hits you, and you're not ready. And you cannot just master strength to yourself and say, Nakaya ko to. Because you know to yourself, I can't. <laughs> Isn't it funny sometimes we want to encourage and encourage other people, but when it comes to other people, invite, it, it, when it comes to us inviting other people to encourage us, ayo natin. Because we have all had this facade in our head na kung Christian ka, hindi ka nang hihina. And that's why, ikaw, anything I can pray, hindi, okay. Praise God. I'm good, brother. <laughs> but there is a place that we need to strengthen one another. You know, for Paul, why he was able to go through persecutions, jail time, all those meetings. He would mention it in his letter. I thank God for Timothy who came for me. I thank God for Mark who encouraged me. I thank God for the church in, because they were with me. They encouraged. Hindi po nag si Paul. Hindi po super Christian si Paul. Hindi ako na yun. Meron pong community si Paul. That's why he can weather storms. I really believe if the past two years were not a pandemic, we could have weathered politics, some of the issues that we are weathering right now, so much better. But the distance, yung lahat po tayo magkakalayo, puro Facebook lang, it created a storm that we weren't prepared for. And we don't want to keep the distance there we want to actually bridge the gap, meet with one another. Talaga, iba yung binoto mo. Usap tayo. Tara. Talaga, ganyan yung view mo sa gen. Oh, talaga, usap tayo. Tara. Ganyan yung view mo sa divorce. Ah, talaga, sige. Oh, sige, sige. Mag, mag-usap tayo para pag nag-usap tayong face-to-face, we can strengthen one another kasi baka nangihina ka lang. That's why Hebrews, 
a church, of, a group of Christians who were shrinking back because of persecution, the, 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 the writer tells them, sabi niya, let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good gifts. He gives 14, let us. Sinabi niya, alam mo, tara, hindi siya sinabing, you spur one another. Hindi niya sinabi, I will do this. Sabi niya, let us do this because I can't do this. You can't do this by yourself. But together, we can spur one another because sometimes I don't want to do good. But if Jerome is there with me and would say, bro, grabe, ito talaga, bro, thank you for telling me, ah. Okay, sige, sige, sorry bro. Yung, we're better when we're together. Yeah, even for Jesus, when you go back to His letters, when He would send the disciples, He would send them two by two. Kasi pag may nahiyang isa, pag may nag-back out na isa, merong babatok, ay may, may, may maghihila. Okay. To say, hindi, kaya mo yan. you can do this. That's why Paul says, I long to see you that I may impart to you. But here's a caveat, very quick caveat lang before I land this to the third point. Sabi niya, that is that we may be mutually encouraged by each other's faith, both yours and mine. Very interesting, noteworthy. To say, Paul was saying, na, you know, I want to go there not just to encourage you, but I know at the same time, if I encourage you and I hear your stories, you're going to encourage me as well. And that's what I love about Victory Groups. Kanina nag Victory Group po kami ng mga studyante na Lasev. And every time that we're going through the book of James, when they share their insights, hindi lang po ako yung natututo. Ay, hindi lang po sila yung natututo dahil pastor ako. Ako rin po natututo ko. Talaga, hindi ko naisip yun. Ang galing nun ah. Ang galing na view nyo. Yung mga singles po, sila Christian. Yung kapag, when we sit down sila, listen, pag when we, when we hear one another, galing. Bro, pwede ko bang kunin yan? Kunyari, galing sa pastor. Pero galing sa estudyante. <laughs> because as much as we're a pastor, we can also learn from you. That's why we encourage you to join a Victory Group. Not because mahina ka, but because pwede tayong lumakas together. We can learn from one another. I can just imagine someone who lost their job in the church. And then someone coming along, alam mo, ako rin, nawalan ako ng trabaho a few months ago. Pero bro, grabe, maniwala ka lang. I just got a call. Lipad na akong Canada mamaya. Mamaya na. <laughs> Pwede bang next week na? Kwento mo muna sa akin. Okay. Pero we can encourage one another. Grabe bro, ang hirap ng marriage namin ngayon. Yeah, I remember five years ago, muntik na kami mag- may huwalay ng asawa kasi we're going through. But you know what? We just prayed. We went through it. Talk to people. You know bro, connected ka na ba sa Victory Group? Hindi pa. Bro, I want to encourage you because we can talk about those things there. There are things in your head na feeling mo kapag inopen mo, may hiya ka. But let me tell you, if you go and be part of a victory group, you're gonna find a place where you can actually receive feedback and at the same time receive encouragement. That's why we are asking you to be part of a victory group. Not just so that, wala lang, para lang madami tayong victory group. No, but because we value life together. We know that there is a plan of God for you. Each of us can be a blessing to one another. Every one of us. The Bible says we are all ambassadors. We're all ministers. It's not just me, but every one of us. That's why even Pastor C would say everybody is a minister. Every member a minister. Because it's not just the pastor, every one of us. Now, last but not the least, Paul wanted to be there in Rome because he wanted to reap harvest in church and in community. So Paul, first of all, he wanted to go there to share. Second, Paul wanted to strengthen, to fix, to establish. But hindi lang po doon nag-end. Paul also wanted them to grow and bear fruit so that within the church, there's going to be breakthroughs 
And at the same time, beyond the church, we're gonna be a blessing as well. Yun po yung heart ni Paul. Sobrang evangelist pa rin niya. That's why, sabi niya, I do not want you to be unaware, brothers, that I have often intended to come to you, but thus far I've been prevented in order that I may reap some harvest among you. Paul was talking about increased maturity. He wanted these believers to mature in their thinking, in the way that they would walk and conduct their lives. In our context today, we want to meet together so that whether online or offline, our life is aligned with Christ. The way that we live our lives beyond this meeting, we're still salt and light. Paul wanted to see breakthroughs in them. But Paul also wanted more Gentiles to also receive Jesus. Kaya sabi niya dito, I'm under obligation. Gusto kong pumunta dyan kasi may burden ako eh. Ito yung binigay sa akin na God to the Greeks, to the barbarians, both to the wise, to the foolish. Hindi po sinasabi, hindi po nang discriminate si Paul dito. He's just saying to everybody, I am under obligation to everybody to let them know of the goodness of Jesus, of the finished work of Jesus. Why? It was already a great church. Paul, okay na yun. No, Paul want, knows every person matters. Every person here matters. We all need the gospel. But every person out there, kahit anong social status, kahit anong history, kahit anong background, they all need to hear Jesus. That's why Paul even, that's why Paul Again, wanted to say, doon sa, sa verse na binasa po natin sa una, he knew that this church had a very special privilege. Sabi niya doon, your faith is proclaimed in all the world. Paul was not saying literally the world, but he was saying to the empire of Rome. Sabi niya, you are in a very strategic place. That if you as a church you are a church that shares spiritual gifts. You're strengthened, you're fixed, you're established, and you are also continuing to bear fruit. Kitang kita kayo ng mga Romans. And every unbelieving Roman citizen would look at the church and would say, Wow, there's something different. That's not just a group. There's power in that place. That's why Paul wanted to be there. Now again, I believe we are here in Pasig for a very particular reason. We're here in Estancia. We're in the middle of all of these places. And we're gonna talk about that next week. And I, we believe we're here because God wants us to use for the, to, to, to the city, right? Do you believe that? See, my prayer for us as we land this is that we will be a church that shares the spiritual gifts that God has given us. I pray that we will be a church that builds up one another. A lot of people would say, Lagi naman ako umaatan ng church, hindi ako build up. Baka minsan, yung gate mo din, nakasarado eh. Di ba may gustong mag, ano sayo, mag, gusto mag-pray sa'yo? Someone wants to build you up. Bro, can I pray for you? Bakit? Ba't mga pagpipray? Lamig-lamig eh. Di ba? Tapos tas, iisipin mo, tapos pag-alis mo, kala ko ba mag-build up tayo one another? <laughs> Bakit? It's about time for us sometimes to actually initiate. The Bible also says that, you know, do unto others what you want others to do to you. I hope that we're going to be a church that bears fruit within the church, within this place, and we're going to bear fruit also beyond. Now, the whole heart of Paul behind all of this is not simply so that ang ganda sa resume, ang ganda, makikilala ko, nag, nag, nag-grow ko yung church. No, hindi po yun yung goal ni Paul in any way. But I believe the, Paul, the, the, the heart of Paul is simply out of love. 
1 John 4, verse 19 to 21. This is the reason. And this is the reason why we encourage us to build one another, to build up one another, to share the spiritual gifts. Not because wala lang po tayong magawa. But I believe it is, first of all, we were loved by Jesus so much. And we want to love one another as well. Tignan mo yung katabi mo. Mukha bang may nagmamahal dyan sa katabi mo? You know, God wants to use you to be a vessel of love to that person. To be a vessel of love to the people outside of this place. We love, we share, we build up one another because God did that first to each one of us. We do all of this because we know that the person beside us is valuable in the sight of God as well. Amen? I want to invite everybody to stand up to our feet. I want us to bow down our heads. Take this time to allow the Holy Spirit just to speak to you. Jesus, thank you for your love for us. Lord, yung pinaka first week or even yung cornerstone series nga namin, Lord, Really, the reason why the, the church is built, Lord, it's, it's not just because there are people na walang magawa every Sunday, Lord. It's because you loved us when we were sinners. And, you're, and you want us to be made holy, to be conformed in your image and likeness. And Lord, we remember when you walked on this earth, Lord, hindi mo sinarile yung mga gift na meron ka. But you used it to build up your disciples, you use it to build up people that were not yet part of your kingdom. And Lord, I believe in the same way, that is your design for each one of us. You would want us, Lord, to also build up one another. To also exercise the gifts of the Spirit. Lord, we want to take this moment or to hear from you. Many of us, Lord, nangungusap ka for us to actually step out in faith and to say, you know what? I guess what? I, I guess this is the day for me to get connected. Or dalam ko, nangungusap ka to many of us. Maybe we've tried before, but we didn't get connected. Lord, I pray that today we will be part of what you are doing in this city. Lord, we bless you. Lord, we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Can we give God praise? Now, before we wrap this up, I want to pray for, una, una, I want to ask some of you. Una is for people, probably you were invited here. And you're thinking, paano ako magkakaroon ng gift or ng fruit of the Holy Spirit? Eh, wala pa nga akong Jesus. I haven't accepted Jesus in my life. I want to I wanna ask you, I want to invite you to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. We made this decision, and this decision is a decision that we will never regret. So if ikaw to, wala ka pang relationship kay Jesus, maybe you're religious, but you know in your heart you're not following Jesus as your Lord and Savior, can you simply raise your hand? mo. If that's you, can you raise your hand? Yes, I see that hand. Any more? Meron pa po ba? I see that hand in the back. Is there anyone else? I see that hand in the back. Another one. I see those hands. There are people. And if you are online, you can also make this decision. It's not a lesser decision dahil online ka lang. But I believe God is working in you. If you raise your hand, can you pray this prayer with me? Walang magic po tong prayer na to, but it's, it's just a way for us to lead you into a time of prayer. Lord Jesus, we receive you as you as as our Lord and Savior. Lord, we say and we acknowledge, Lord, that we are sinners, but at the same time that you are our Savior who loved us and wants to rescue and redeem us. Lord, transform us. 
or that we believe the old is gone and the new has come. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Can we give a round of applause for these people who received Jesus as Lord and Savior? If nagtaas ka ng kamay, pwede bang itaas mo lang yung kamay mo? Hanggang alas ocho. Hindi, joke lang. Para lang, we can see you. Okay? And we can also approach you so we can find a way to be connected to you. Last but not the least, before we conclude, before we commission you, is if you are not yet part of a victory group, ano pang hinihintay mo? Tara na. Uh, why not be part of a victory group today? Right? If you've been thinking, Lord, do you really have a plan for me? And you're always wondering, Lord, talaga ba, talaga ba? Maybe it's about time you include someone in your life. And you ask that person, Sige nga, I want to grow in my relationship with God this year. Amen? So, if ikaw yon, there, there's gonna be, some of us are here, yung mga, iba naman ng mga victory group leaders, pwede mong lapitan yung mga victory group leaders, pwede mo ba itas yung, katabi, yung, yung katabi mo, kamay mo? Yan, okay? If you are around these people, lapitan mo lang, sabihin mo, paano ba ako pwede maging connected to a victory group? Maybe next week they can have coffee. Ako, kanina lang, I just had coffee with a student who attends our service na hindi pa connected to church. We can have a coffee and we can have those conversations happening. Amen? Let's all raise our hands before we leave. Lord, maraming salamat. Lord, because of the Holy Spirit, Lord, we are empowered to be salt and to be light. Lord, I pray that your word has enriched each one of us that it has lifted up our burdens, that it has realigned our focus to you. Lord, and we pray that as we go back to our families, as we go back to our community, to the companies that you have called us, Lord, we pray that we will always bring your word and bring your spirit and that we will always be living examples of your goodness in the places that you have called us to. Lord, send us be with us in Jesus' name. And everyone say, Amen and Amen and Amen.